Hello, my name is John Keeling with Real Power Industrial. Real Power makes winding, coiling, and spooling machines for many different materials. A feature available for many of our machines we call ESTL, or Electronic Stop to Link. The points covered in this video are covered in more detail in the ESTL Quick Instruction Guide, that is IG-003-0423, or in the manual for your specific machine. In this video, we'll be looking at an iDEC FT1A display running second generation ESTL software from RPEI or RealPower. Let me describe a scenario where uh, ESTL can help. Help you keep track of your footage, help you keep track of the reels. You can see here on this operate screen, this is the footage. This is where the footage will be displayed for the, for the reel. This will be the count of reels that you've done. So in real time, the operator can see how much cable he's pulled and how many reels he's done. Uh, there's three indicators I wanna bring your attention to. This run, it's got a green indicator beside it. Uh, fast means it's gonna go at full speed. And cuts, it's green on cuts, it means we haven't, we haven't uh, done all of our reels. So these three green indicators mean the machine is ready to go. Let me demonstrate by pulling some cable. Now I'm not gonna do 10,000 feet. I'm not gonna do 100 reels. That would be way too long. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna do uh, five feet and we're gonna do two cuts. All right, so here's the first five feet started. I'm just pulling this by hand. Typically this would be a machine. The speed would be how fast you'd set. Okay, so when we pass four feet, you might've heard a click, there's a little slow indicator, and the last foot is going to be at a slower speed so we don't stress the material when we stop it. And as we hit five feet, you saw we we incremented, we, now we have one cut. It says it's ready for you to cut the cable and make your first reel. Uh, the machine actually stopped um, because of that red stop indicator tells us that. So we're gonna pretend like I've cut the cable and I'm ready for my next reel. I'm gonna zero this to measure the next reel. Still it tells me I've got one reel and zero feet. Let me keep going. I'm gonna get another handle on this. As we cross four feet, and you heard the click, we're in slow, uh, we're still green, and uh, we're still going. We're just going slower. Okay, so we stopped at five feet, and there's two things I wanna show you. We have stop in red. We stopped on the footage, we stopped on five feet. We also stopped on five cut, I'm sorry, two cuts. So we have completed the, this job. If you were doing 100 feet on 100 reels, you'd have 100 here and you'd have 100 there and you'd be done. You'd have accurately counted the screens. So you'd actually counted the reels. I'm gonna go back, but the only thing left here is to go back to the main menu. The main menu screen is pretty important as it's the gateway to all the other screens. You'll note eight colored panels below the title. Seven of the eight panels are buttons to the other screen, and the eighth panel is a status indicator. No password, that's a status indicator. Main menu, that's where we just came from. We've already discussed the main operate screen, and the top left button of the screen is how we go back there. We'll talk about each of the other panels, but we're going to start with the buttons on the left, because the buttons on the left do not require a password. We'll talk about the password and the other controls on the right of the screen later in the video. The set point screen show how I set up the example that I just ran. Let's take a look. You can see here on the set point screen that five foot was the distance length for each reel. We were going to run slow for the last foot, so four foot ran fast, the last foot ran slow and the number of cuts, the number of reels that we made were two. I want to point out that you want to press this use feet and you change any of these values 
so that the program knows to execute it, uh, even if it's a Rudian feed. If you switch to meters, you can see the values change to meters. It changes on every screen. Back at the main menu, we did five feet, now it's one and a half meters. Back to the main menu, back to the set point screen, 1.5 meters. Okay, we'll change back to feet. And about to, what we need to do now is hit the main menu. The green totals one button will take us to the maintenance totals page. Maintenance totals. This shows the total footage in hours since the last reset. We'll talk about the totals reset screen later in the video, but the idea is you can reset the time and footage before each job for the beginning of each day, and you get a summary of how much footing and how long the ESTL was powered up since the last reset. You can think of it as a trip odometer, and you can do it, you can set it, reset the trip in different ways, depending on what you want to do. For example, this 10 feet shows the 10 feet that we did in our example. We did two rolls of five foot each, that's the 10 foot. So you might want to set the footage at the end of each job. This shows seven hours. That might be seven hours since the shift change. From here, we'll go to the main menu. The view totals two button takes us to the machine totals page pretty self-explanatory. It's just like the uh, maintenance totals page, except this one cannot be reset. So this uh, machine has run 135 feet since it was built. Uh, this machine is pretty new. It's only got 23 hours of runtime on it. Your company can use this in different ways. And we'll go back to the main menu. For the buttons on the right side of the menu screen, you can't do anything without adding, entering a password, so we'll cover that now. Note that the top right panel says no password. That's the indicator only panel that shows if a password is required. It's red with the text no password if a password is needed, and green with the text password ok if the program already has a valid password. To enter a password, press the blue password key password button immediately below the indicator to take us to the password screen. You'll immediately notice the no access bar in the middle. That again tell us, tells us that we don't have a valid password and we need one. When the machines ship from real power they should have the password 13579. Your company will probably want to change that uh, to something else that's easy for you to remember and not just be the default that comes from real power. You can tell that I've got access to the, to, <clears throat> to the other screens now because I put in a valid password. Uh, you don't typically have to change this uh, new password button, um, so we're not. We're going to go back to the main screen. When we look at the menu screen now, you can see that it says password OK in the indicator panel. That's because we just put in a valid password. That will time out in about five minutes. But during this time, we can push the re reset totals, which will reset the totals under this uh, totals one line, which is the maintenance totals. We can also calibrate the unit. We're going to go look at those each one at a time. So, Plus this, you can see this is the 10 hours. This is uh, 10 feet. That's the 10 feet that we did on the example. We had two rolls, five feet. We completed that job so we can zero it now because we're ready for the next customer's request. So now we've zeroed it. And seven hours, that's the shift change. I'm not gonna change that because I'm still on shift. But you can see seven, we've got zero feet for that customer. If you go back to the main menu, it still shows the five feet because we've never cleared it. We've finished the other job, we need to clear, we need to clear that, we need to clear the cuts. Now we're ready for the next job. Again, what we did is we reset the totals. You can see the totals, and you can see we're ready for the next job. To calibrate the machine, you have to pull a known length of cable through an encoder counter. This portion here, the overall unit, we call a counter. 
cover it in my hands. And this piece down here is the actual encoder. If you look carefully, you can see the shaft from this wheel turns the encoder that tells that tells the ESTL how much cable you pulled. If you look at the cable, you can see that I've got a blue piece of tape with this edge lined precisely up with this piece of metal. We're going to pull uh, exactly 11 feet of cable. We're going to get another piece of tape. There's another piece of tape 11 feet down the cable. And when we pull it up, we're going to align it. And then we're going to do the calibration. This reel here is the diameter that um, we will be entering into the program. Now, currently it's at four, four inches because I measured with a ruler. It's kind of hard to measure that wheel with a metal plate. So I just kind of guessed it at about four inches, but we're going to calibrate it to, to nail it in. Again, what I'll be doing is I'll be pulling this cable and we'll be watching the, we'll be watching the footage like we did before in the other example. And uh, then we'll go through the calibrate process. Okay, the next thing we're going to show is the calibration process. Using the encoder counter that we showed in the previously. I'm just going to briefly touch on the calibrate screen. Um, oh, see it change? Change is not allowed. My timer ran out of my password. I've got to go through the password. I've got to say one, three. Okay, so I've got access. I'm going to go to the calibrate screen. So, four inch diameter, that's the approximate diameter of the, of the wheel. I just measured it. This hundred parts pulses per revolution, that's what PPR stands for. That's going to be pretty standard on any real power machine. If there's exceptions to that, you'll have to specifically ask real power. But 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, you can just stick a hundred in there and we don't change that. That's important, it's a hundred and nothing else. Okay, so now the calibration process. We actually don't calibrate, we you know, start the calibration here. We go to the main menu screen, which you've seen before. I, you've seen the encoder, or counter as we call it. And I'm gonna pull 11 for the cable through the, through the counter. I've aligned the tape 11 feet down the cable. And you can see I'm off just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to do math. You can play high-low. You can go back. You can go to this calibrate page and you could say try 3.9. 3.9. 3.9. Don't hit the clear. Okay, then I can go back to the main menu and go with this. Oh, I made 11.2. So I can keep going up, down, up, down, up, down. Or I can do this. I can say, um, I know that I had 11 feet in here, so I'm going to put 11 in my calculator, and I'm going to hit the divide button, and I'm going to say 11.2. When I do that, it's going to say 0.982, okay? So I'm going to say, go to the main menu, go to the calibrate, I'm going to take 0.982, and I'm going to multiply it times 3.9, 3.9. And it tells me 3.83. I will say 3.83. Okay, I'm gonna go back and look at this. That's on 11 feet. So we have calibrated it. You'd want to pull the cable through three times at least. I used 11 foot cable. You're gonna to want to use a cable that's at least 50 feet long. And the longer cable will give you a little more accuracy, but at least 50 feet is our recommendation. And after you've, after you've set it so it's reading uh, correctly, you want to run it three times at least. Um, and then we'll go to the main menu. Okay, this is a video bonus, which may or may not make the final cut, but I'm going to show you how to change the password. You notice currently it says no password. So I'm going to press password. I'm going to give it a valid password, which one, three, five, seven, nine. Now I have a valid password. Now I can change things. I'm going to change this password to something that I like. One, two, three, 
four, five. Wouldn't recommend you use this because I'll make it six. All right, I wouldn't recommend that you use this because um, it's pretty easy to guess. But I have got it loaded and I press and hold and hold and hold. And then it says no access. Okay, so I have no access. So I gotta clear this and go one, two, three, four, five. Enter. Great. One, two, three, four, five, six. Enter. Okay. There you go. I changed the password. I don't generally recommend that you do that. One more trick. Well, I got a valid password in there. I can change things. Notice that currently says zero. I'm going to change the password to zero. I've got no access. And then I say zero. Now I've got access. Now what I've effectively done is disable the password. So now, no matter what you do, it's always going to say password OK. Because zero is a valid password. And that's what it plugs in when the timer expires. So just a couple of little tricks. Um, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video.